I'm going to share with you a simple technique that can elevate your paintings to new levels of depth and dimension. This video is all about the art of lost edges and including them in my paintings was a game changer for me. First of all, what is a lost edge? For simplicity in this video, I'm calling a lost edge an edge that's not there, it's missing. Some artists might call soft edges lost edges, but I won't be talking about soft edges in this video. Think of our lost edge as an absent edge. Here on this bar now, I've created some lost edges around the outside edge. Up the top here, I've got a little lost edge running down the side there. There's another one. Here on the left hand side, there's one. And there's another one down the bottom there. Even the front edge of the wing there is lost as well. You can include lost edges in your paintings in two ways. The first and simplest way is to not paint them in at all. I usually do that in simple paintings when I don't paint in a background. So the background is white and an area of my subject might also be white, like it is here on this woodpecker. I left the background unpainted and the feathers here in this section are white. I didn't need to paint that edge in at all. This edge here and this edge here allows the viewer's imagination to fill in the details. Ali Kavanagh, an amazing watercolour artist, includes lost edges in her figure paintings. In her earlier works, where her subject was in the sun, you can see how she has left lost edges. Here on this painting, the shoulder and side of the arm are lost. And she's done the same thing here on this painting. The shoulder and side of the arm are lost, as well as the side of the face and the green scarf. The second way I create a lost edge is to allow the colour of the area I'm painting to flow into the background and become a part of the background. I showed you the owl at the start where I did that, and I've also done that here on this leucodendron painting. Before I started the painting, I worked out the colours that I was going to use for the flower, and then I washed those colours onto the background. When it was dry, I painted in the flower and leaves, and I didn't paint in some of the edges. I just left the background colours showing. These edges here are lost or not painted in, and they blend into the background. And I've left a few lost edges on the bracts of the flower. And here, in one of Ali's paintings, she's used a similar technique where the edge of the face blends into the background. I'll show you how I use both techniques when I paint. I'll tell you why they help to add depth and dimension to your subject. And I'll also talk about where to put them, because I get asked that a lot. Before I do all of that, I need to thank Skillshare, who are the sponsors of this video. If you haven't heard of Skillshare, they are the largest online learning community for creative people. And I've been teaching watercolour classes with them for eight years. One of my classes focuses on using lost edges to create depth in our watercolour painting of a rose. The classes on Skillshare cover a wide range of topics from illustration, graphic design and photography to music, marketing and productivity. It also has many creative career focused classes. So if you're wanting to build a creative career, Skillshare has classes in marketing, social media, user design, productivity, and lots more. I joined this class by Ali Abdal called Notion Masterclass, Maximize Your Productivity and Organization. It's all about how to use the productivity app called Notion to help you organize your life and business and be more productive. I now use Notion every day and it's been a game changer for me. All of the classes are on demand so you can learn at your own pace in your own time and you can create and share projects that you complete during each class. If you've never used Skillshare and you'd like to try it, I'm happy to let you know that you can access all my classes and many more for free. The first 500 people to click the link can get a one month free trial of Skillshare. The link is in the description below. 
Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, let me show you how I create lost edges. I've transferred my line drawing to my watercolour paper and I've left a gap at the top of the head here and also along the back edge of the beak. I'll paint the beak in first. So I'm going to use some transparent orange for that. I'll mix a bit of water with it because I don't want it to be too dark. I'll paint the beak in really quickly and I'll drag that colour onto the background to create a loose splash of orange there. I'll get a bit of water just to break that up a bit. Lift the board. Let the paint flow down. Soften a few edges. Okay, so I've got colour on the beak that's flowing off onto the background. I take a smaller brush and take the orange right to the edge of the beak. Okay, I'll drop a bit of water onto that as it's drying to create some blooms and then I'll wait for it to dry. Okay, the splash of colour is dry now, so now I can start to paint in the beak. I've just put a bit of water on the front tip of the beak and I'll paint some grey there and that will bring in the bottom edge of the beak. And then right up the top of the beak I wet the paper with water and I've got a bit of the orange again and I paint in that top edge of the beak. The rest of that outer edge I'm going to leave, I'm not going to paint anything there at all. So then I carry on and I paint in the other areas of the beak, making sure that I keep the paint away from that outer edge where I want the lost edge. And eventually I get something that resembles a beak. So there I've deliberately obscured the back edge of the beak by allowing the background colour to bleed onto it. So now I'm going to paint in the top of the head and I'll leave the paint away from that edge where I haven't drawn it in, right at the top, near the beak. I'm wetting the paper here because I want to work wet on wet. I want my paint marks to have soft edges. I've mixed some grey from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. It's more of a blue-grey. And I start to paint that on the wet paper. I take it around the top of the head where my pencil line is but I make sure I don't take it all the way down to the top of the beak. The goose has got white feathers on the top of the head so that's a spot where I can leave a broken edge as long as my background colour is white there. That's why when I was painting the orange splash on the background I tried to keep the paint away from the top edge of the head. If I had let the paint drift to the edge of the head there, I would have ended up with a hard edge and I wanted to avoid that. I kept working on the wet paper as long as I could and then I went back to that edge at the top where I've stopped the grey paint just to make sure that it's not too hard just there. So I softened it a bit further with my brush. Okay, so now you can see that I've got a lost edge, the top of the head there where I haven't put any paint at all, and a lost edge here where the beak blends into the background colour. And here's how it ended up. I've also included some lost edges on the back section of the goose as well. All right, so why use them? We use them because lost edges create depth and dimension in a painting, because they mimic our visual perception. They're like a magic trick that makes a painting go from flat to wow. They create depth and dimension because they work just like our eyes naturally see the world. In real life, things in the distance aren't as sharply defined as those up close. That's what lost edges do in a painting. It's like an open invitation to your brain to complete the picture, making everything look more 3D and exciting. 
I get asked all the time about where are the best places to put them in a painting and that will vary depending on your artistic intention and the subject matter. If you were painting a landscape or a seascape, you might lose some edges on distant objects which will make the foreground objects appear closer. You can use lost edges in shadow areas or areas that you might want to push back away from the viewer. If you take the goose example, I created the lost edge on the back edge of the beak rather than the front edge. If you are painting a curved edge, you can emphasize the curve by losing it altogether. You saw how Ali lost some edges in the contours of the face on the portrait painting that I showed you. You could also use lost edges to suggest movement. So if you were painting something that was moving like an animal running or something like that, just experiment and have fun with it. And head to my website if you'd like to do some of my online watercolor classes. I put lots of information there that will answer any questions you have. I hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Quiet on set. Yeah. Leo. Do you mind? Come on, Leo, go in here. It's nice in here, look. There you go. Okay, he's got a hidey hole now. You right, buddy? <clears throat> Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Sitting on the speaker cable. Thanks, Leo. Are you ready? He's got one of your cat sample brushes. It's all right, doesn't matter. Thank <laughs> you.